Hello there, my name is Chris Palmer. In today's Google Maps, Google My Business SEO for Beginners video, what I'd like to share with you is the better understanding of the 26 factors that are being measured by my friend William Jones's new scraper tool. Now, inside of this tool, they're pulling in 26 data points. So what I wanna share with you, instead of walking through the tool, I already know it works, what I want to share with you is why are they pulling in these 26 data points for an audit? Why are they important? Why are they not important? What's the point of this? And which ones should you be looking at? Which ones should you not be looking at? What's what's the overall purpose of this particular tool? So I don't want to waste any time. Let's go ahead and walk through these 26 data points. Keyword in the business name is essential. We want to know how many competitors have the keyword in their business name, how many competitors are competing for that particular keyword. And we also want to know, are these businesses that have the keyword in their business name, are they getting a ranking boost or is it a demotion for the particular SERP that you're in? So this is a valuable piece of data to have at the push of a button. Next is business names. Now, I noted inside the write-up that uh, knowing the business name is good for a tool, you know, to, to apply columns so we can get an understanding, but I don't necessarily, it, it's irrelevant for ranking. Moving on to longitude and latitude, being able to pinpoint the actual location of not only my business, but also my competitors' businesses. It's very, very essential to know this, not only for more advanced traffic manipulation techniques, but it's also good just to be able to create URL strings so I can start running traffic, maybe start adding my keywords and my brand name to their longitude and latitude, plus add keywords, plus my brand name. It's really good for advanced tactics, and to be able to have this URL at the push of a button, very helpful. The next element is, what is the distance to the target location or the ranking location? Say you're a business owner in Houston, Texas. We want to know how far are we or our competitors from the ranking location. Like, so if I'm, if I'm 10 miles away from Houston, I'd like to know how far are my competitors, how far am I? This is very essential for any tool. I think that this is good to have. Next is the website link inside of GMB. So we want to know how many competitors have their website attached. Are they using Google sites? Does it matter? Are they using landing pages? This is good information to have, but not necessarily a ranking signal. Same with the target location. Good information, but not a signal. Are, the Google, are there Google My Business appointment links? Now, as far as this being a ranking factor or a ranking signal, definitely not. However, knowing for our SERP, is it the normal to have an appointment link showcased under our website? Is this, is this what customers have grown to see? Is this normal? So knowing if our competition is doing this is essential for our SEO campaigns. Moving into primary category of Google My Business, this is one of the most important ranking factors within Google My Business, one of the most important. So understanding what the majority of the top performers have as far as a primary category, absolutely essential. I'm very happy to see it in this tool. The next element is additional Google My Business categories. Now, I feel, in my opinion, when I'm optimizing a Google My Business listing, much like Google ranks pages, not sites, Google is looking at the listing. What is the service that you provide? I want to rank for that. We want to get hyper-focused. If you do painting, I want to be hyper-focused on painting. If you're a chiropractor, I want to get super focused on being a chiropractor. All of that secondary stuff could be talked about on the website. But when I'm optimizing my Google My Business listing, I want to be optimized for the service that I want to win. And that's it. Now, as far as secondary services, we can add those to the website. But when we want to see what our competition is doing, we want to see, have they misstepped? Are they loading up their services, their secondary categories, or do they just have two? Their primary and one secondary, do they know what they're doing? So this is essential information. Next is going to be, uh, are there appointment links, primary category, additional GMB categories? I love seeing these types of details. These are signals. Categories are signals. Next, hours of operation is not going to be a ranking factor. However, it makes a good column. So I went ahead and noted that within the write-up. You know, you know, seeing their hours of operation isn't a signal. But we want to know, are we open more than them? How often are they open? Are they only taking phone calls? It's good information to have. Now, as far as 
the Google My Business overall rating. We want to see who we're up against, but if somebody only has one review and it's a five star, their overall rating is a five. So this is not essential for ranking, but it's definitely good to see what the overall scoreboard is because if, if it's all fives, we want to make sure we slide in there with a five from the door. Let's keep moving on here into what is the total Google My Business post count. Now, I do not feel that the post count is a signal that needs to be measured. I don't feel that it's a ranking factor. However, clicks and traffic are absolutely one of the most important elements when ranking your Google Maps or Google My Business listing. It's one of the most important factors aside from proximity. So seeing the level that our competition is posting, all right, what's their total post count? How often are they posting? They're posting twice a week. We want to post five times a week. What we'd like to see the level of competition because we can get a competitive advantage by overworking our competition. So by overstanding them. So very essential. Next, what's the post count over the course of 90 days? Now, I do feel that 90 days is above board. I feel that this is a good addition into the tool because the volatility within Google Maps and Google My Business fluctuates so much. 90 days is a little bit of a stretch. However, it's great information to have to see how many posts or see how consistent our competition has been being. So next is what is the post count over 90 days? We talked about that. What is the most recent post date? So we want to see consistency. Again, it goes into the posts. Posting is not a signal, but traffic and clicks, calls definitely are a KPI that we need to be measuring. So very important for ranking, having consistent posts, getting that traffic, getting the clicks, being active within the GMB. This is good to see our competition. Are they doing it? Are they not? Can I get a small or a slight edge by doing it? Very essential. Next is what's the total GMB photo count? Now, again, this is a secondary factor, but it goes in that Google goes out of their way. If you're getting more photo views than your competition or the overall average, Google will go out of their way to show you, hey, you're getting more than your competition. It'll be a pop-up. You might see this. So knowing what your competition has as far as photos is concerned, how many they have, we want to go do more than them. Because if I have more photos, I can get more views. If I can get more views, then I can have more than the overall average, which shows importance for my business. So this is good to know. Questions and answers added into the business. Now, Q&A again, secondary factor. However, have your competitors taken the time to answer commonly asked questions or ask commonly answered asked questions and go in there and answer them? This is an often overlooked signal this is showcased right inside your knowledge panel. Somebody searches your business. The questions and answer form is right there. It's built within the source code. Very important to see if your competition has taken this level of, you know, have, have they literally taken the time to do this? This is important to know. So this is good information. Next is total Q&A questions and answers. So we want to see who's doing it. We'll be able to see that at a drop of a dime. So we'll move into the next do you or your competitors have a Google My Business products listed? So products are essential, but more notably, if they're listing their products, we want to see which, for the top competitors, which products are they showcasing? What types of descriptions do they have? Are they showing their pricing? Are they showing what they're actually optimizing for? Are they mirroring it to the website? What's their optimization level? What products are there? How many are there? What's the price? This is definitely good information to have. Did uh, Do you find the CID link? So customer identification or the CID backlink, you know, having these links easily accessible is very good. The CID link is not a common, the URL for the customer identification is not something that a normal or a, a regular user other than an SEO is utilizing. So having this within the tool is good for us SEOs, but as far as a normal user, this isn't necessarily essential. I don't wanna go building links to this. I don't wanna go sharing this out. It's not the share link. It's not a shareable link. It's it's a very uncommon URL to be, to be using, right? So I don't know. It's good for me to know, but I don't know about for a regular user. Next, get the knowledge panel URL. This is absolutely phenomenal. 
this particular knowledge panel is going to pop up my business listing. It's going to have all my reviews. It'll show my photos. It'll show my business, the call now, the website, the directions, everything, the knowledge panel, essential. These are the types of links that we want to go out and show. Brings us right to our homepage. The listing's all about us. Absolutely phenomenal to have this at the click of a button. So next is GMB post view all URLs. I love this feature. I wish there was more features like this built into Williams tool. Having these URLs at the drop of a dime, just click a button and get all the post URLs. This is very, very helpful. This is great for a magnitude of different things, not only for sharing, maybe creating feeds of some sort, but this is great. I love this feature within the tool. This is phenomenal. Next is what um, GMB post views. So here's the knowledge panel and then the uh, GMB post views. Now he added one more thing inside of here, uh, which was another one where they're giving the entire, so all the product URLs, all the post URLs, these are all inside of there. Another thing that I'd love to see inside of this is a list of all my image URLs. And also I'd like it to pull the, all the surrounding areas, M codes. So you know the G slash code is your machine readable entity ID, kind of like your CID, but this is your entity ID. Each location has an M tag, which is a ma machine readable entity ID for a location. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I'd love to see this within the tool. I'd love to get the surrounding area, say in a 50 to 100 mile radius, pull all those M codes, all in one shot so I could start building links and start showing relevance for those locations for my business. But aside from that, these 26 signals aren't all necessarily ranking factors. However, to be able to pull all of this information at the drop of a dime, at a click of a button, it's absolutely phenomenal. You know, it's, it's a lot better than say these free extensions that don't, they give you a lot of this data, but not to this level or this to degree. So with that being said, my name is Chris Palmer. If you're interested in seeing my full write-up, come and check out Chris Palmer Marketing, Google My Business, SEO Audit. Forgot the ad tool, but check it out. If you have questions about these signals or if you want me to make a signals video, what are the most important SEO ranking factors? Like truly, I'd love to go ahead and make that video. If you have questions, ask in the section below. And I always look forward to seeing you in the next Google My Business SEO for Beginners video. Have a wonderful day. Woo! Google My Business SEO for Beginners! Yeah!